And talking about lunch, what about fruit and veg? I happen to be a vegetarian, I eat a bit of fish as well. But the, the point is that the food retail market in South Africa and indeed in the whole of Africa is becoming extremely competitive. MassMart's numbers came out earlier this week. We spoke to Grant Patterson and he conceded that they are really expanding their food retail offering. We've spoken to ShopRite this week as well, and it is a very competitive, small margin environment. And there's one player that isn't listed on the JSE. It might have been a few years ago if it weren't for the competition authorities, and its name is Fruit and Veg City. In the Joburg Power Lunch studio is Franz van der Kolf, the GM of Fruit and Veg, Fruit and Veg City Africa and International. Now, um, Franz, thanks very much for joining us. That implies, of course, that you are expanding from your already substantial presence in South Africa into the rest of Africa. Yes, that's quite right, Lindsay. We are working quite hard at, um, we have stores in, in Zimbabwe at the moment. We have some in Botswana. We have uh, stores in Namibia. We are in Mauritius. Um, we also just opened in Lusaka, but we are working very hard at countries like Ghana, Nigeria. We're looking at Nairobi. There are a number of places that we, um, that we are working on at the moment. Difficult to go from South Africa to certain of the jurisdictions that you've just mentioned, though, because of the different uh, socioeconomic environments. Uh, so it, it, your, your strategy has almost got to be uh, um, sort of tailor-made for each different country. It has, absolutely. You know, there are similarities, but mostly, you know, you have to look at the, the, you know, the nuances of that particular country. We have to make sure that we understand what's happening in that country, what the customers want and what the market is all about. So you're right. We have to spend time in the different countries, make sure we understand it, make sure we understand the market. But you know what is nice, Lindsay, is that um, our offering is a market. And as Africans, we love shopping in markets. So um, all we're doing is we're making the market better, we're air conditioning it, we, we're presenting it well. And that's why I think people support us so well. You know, they, they really like what we offer. It is different to your normal or conventional supermarket in that our, our fresh offering is so big. But yes, you're right, we have to do careful research there. When you go, you've opened a new store, if you've expanded your store rather in uh, the, the Food Lovers Market store in the Tokai area of Cape Town. And if you go there, I can tell you that with people being paid today, if you go there tomorrow morning, if you get there any later than 8.30, you will not get into the place because of the masses of people there. Now, the interesting thing uh, to me about that is the fact that a few years ago, I think it was pick and pay were, going to, were trying to buy you and they weren't allowed to. Uh, are you going to be listing in the future, do you think? This is slightly off the... the the, you know, the, the sure, sure. Look, uh, script, but it's an interesting one for investors. It is. I had a conversation with our CEO, Brian Coppin, the other day, and it's not on the cards right now. I think we still have a lot of work to do. We have to establish our footprint. As I said, the African thing is very important to us. Um, we really want to do well there. And our vision there is to be, you know, rather the best supermarket group in Africa than the biggest, but we certainly want to do it well. And we want to change shopping patterns. So I think not yet. Um, um, it's, it's not on the cards right now. You do have a very unique opportunity here as, as, a, as a fresh uh, vegetable and fruit provider, fresh produce provider, yes. uh, France, in that you can almost, with your buying power, go and become a producer as well or partner with producers and empower people, empower rural communities. In other words, take a piece of ground or take a piece of, of ground that is being used at the moment but not productively enough and say, right, we'll give you some, uh, some money but you've got to... Uh, guarantee that you supply us and us only. Is that part of your strategy as well? Because I think that's yes. a very intriguing uh, a future for you. It's absolutely part of the strategy and you know that's what makes it so interesting because it's so much more than just a supermarket at the end of the day. But we go to farmers and we give them growing plans and you, in our business 40 to 50 percent of our turnover is out of fresh produce. So we can really support farmers, you know, in a normal supermarket it would be 5%, ours is much bigger. So we go to them and we can literally buy up their entire crops if the quality is right and the price obviously. But we do a lot of that and in Zambia where we've just opened, we're buying 40% of our fresh produce is bought locally already. So we all, we're increasing exports out of South Africa but we also support locally. And you know in the poorer communities that's quite important. And, and of course then there's also the whole thing of job creation in our stores, you know, we have quite a... Um, a labor intensive industry so we employ 150 people in a new store and as we know in poorer areas each one of those people might be looking after 10 others so it is a um, it, we, we do a lot of, of, of that sort of social responsibility stuff 
Yeah, it's a unique opportunity for you. So give us your plan now. You're rolling out, I mean, obviously South Africa, you're expanding enormously. I think yes. there's, um, I, I live in Cape Town, obviously, but there's this massive store that's just opened uh, close to the William Nickel Highway in, in Johannesburg. Right. You're going to continue your rollout in South Africa. What is your plan for the rest of Africa? Can you give us an idea of how many stores you might be opening in the near future? Yes, we've got 12 stores at the moment. Um, we're opening in Bulawayo and Luanda in October. We're opening a fourth store in Mauritius um, in November. We're opening in Ndola before the end of the year. Um, Lusaka, uh, Livingston shortly after that. Then we've got a plan to roll out about 10 stores in Ghana in the next three to four years. Um, we're working very hard at Nigeria. Uh, nothing is confirmed there yet, but we've got a number of possible sites that we're looking at at the moment. Um, we've signed a site in Nairobi. We um, obviously in Luanda, well, after the first store, we'll see how that goes and we'll do an, uh, quite a bit after that. You know, the, the difficult part here is, is to find the right locations. And, um, you know, it's not as if shopping centers are being built every day, but that is also changing now. You know, the bigger players in, the, in that industry have started building shopping centers in Africa. So I think in the future it's going to be a bit easier. But, you know, if you look at ShopRite that's been so enormously successful in Africa, they've sort of had to, to, to do their own thing and, and, and make it happen for themselves. So at this stage we're still doing that, but I think in future we'll see a lot more. It's an enormous continent. You know, we're talking about a billion customers. So I think there's, we can build a business as big as our, as our South African business in the rest of Africa and that's certainly what we would want to do but it is going to take time it's not going to happen overnight no, it's not. You mentioned one of the problems is uh, finding locations because shopping centres yes. aren't being built uh, um, as, you know, at, at the pace that you want to expand at. But one of the other problems is as well, France, is keeping your identity because you've started off as Fruit and Veg City, you've gone to Fruit Lovers Market, mm. and, Food Lovers Market rather, and you, if I go in there now I can buy wine and I can buy uh, fabric softener as well, should yes. I want to. I mean, is your plan to become the shop right or the pick and pay of the future or are you going to stay with what you're good at? I think we're going to stay with what we're good at. But having said that, we do have to supply our customers with, with almost a one-stop shop. So our groceries will never be the size of a pick and pay or a shop right. But it will certainly offer some groceries so that if you are in our stores and you do need the fabric softener, you will be able to get it there. And I think you know we've got our own label, private label, which is called Freshers, which is doing enormously well for us. But we'll keep that as a smaller part of our business. We will always have fruit and veg as our main offering. And that will always be 40 to 50 percent of our business. And I think that also is the main need in many African cities. You know, where, where I go, people say to me, if you look at an Accra, for instance, people have to go and buy at the, at the market, the central market. And they saying please just bring us a consistent supply of fruit and veg so yeah we'll always stick to that and I think that is our strength and that also gives us you know our, our advantage so our competitive advantage so we, we won't move away from that but having said that we will absolutely look at the markets and then make ourselves you know compat uh, compatible to those markets are you making lots of money France <laughs> well, the company is doing extremely well, I think. Yes, we are happy. We are happy where we are at the moment, yes. And you know, okay, we have a lot of franchisees in our business. Come they to the exchange well. very soon, if you will. That'll be, it'll, be, it'll be great to see a new retailer on the JSC, but we'll speak about that in the future, I'm sure. Thanks so much for your time this lunchtime. That's Franz van der Kolf, the GM of Fruit and Veg City Africa and International.